After all that you have been through, and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take, or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? And so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the God Woken. Dallas the Hammer, the Secret Eternal, purged the God Woken and used the Source to close the Veil to the Void. The world was saved. Statues in memory of the God Woken who sacrificed their source were erected all across Rivelon. They would never be forgotten. The half-demon Malady took pity on the soulless God Woken silent monks and brought them to the Hall of Echoes. There, from the scraps of their souls that remained, she restored them to life. Sorcerers no more, they lived out the rest of their lives, freed of the burden of being the God Woken. Freed from the weight of the world. As for me, I was already free. And so were the others. The God Woken sacrifice severed the bond between the Sworn and the God King. To atone for my sins, I spent the rest of my days taking care of the sick and elderly, telling the story of the God Woken, that the world may never forget the greatest heroes Rivalon had ever known. Malady stands tall and proud, sunlight sparkling off her mask. From here she looks almost angelic. Ah, there you are. More than a silent monstrosity, less than a god. In the end, I'm not totally convinced it was worth my while to restore your consciousness, seeing what you've done with it so far. Where did I go wrong? The same way I do everything, of course. Demonic guile. How is so boring. It's the why that surprises me. Unfortunately for me, I've grown rather fond of you. Still, I'd expected quite a bit more from you. I was interested in being owed a favor by a shiny new god, not some emperor of the realm. Never mind, I'll find another way. I always do. She fingers the mask covering her face. For a moment, it seems as though she's about to remove it. But instead, she places a hand on your shoulder. We've come a long way together. I did my best by you all the way. Sacrificed much. And I'd have given even more to see you fulfill your destiny. She looks you up and down. I guess this will have to do. Take a moment, why don't you? Relax. Enjoy. I certainly plan to do the same. Oh, I don't know. Around and about. Treat myself to some mead, a lover all 300. I'd say we've earned it. Perhaps our paths will cross again. Perhaps not. Until we find out. If you'll excuse me, darling, I have quite a bit of planning to do. Well, well, look what the cat dragged in. A silent monk. At least that's what you'd be if it weren't for Malady. She's Malady, the one and only. She's greater, I dare say, than we dare dream. Like I would about the return of the codpiece, that it's highly unfashionable. The man's a man, all too prone to the weaknesses of the heart. 
We've seen the results of his errors firsthand. I give it a week before he errs anew. Yes, well, that's to say, that's love, not... All right, all right, maybe. Besides, Lucian. Perhaps even a god deserves a second chance, even if he is a god without powers. As for myself, I'm counting on a second chance as well. Why, I mean my empire, of course. I intend to go home as soon as I can. After all, I've dragons to raise. I need to teach them to be good boys and girls before they set the entire world on fire. There may be an accident or two along the way. Can't be helped, I'm afraid. I do so long to see my palace again. The Forbidden City. The scents of spices and incense. The sound of sitars and far-off rooms. To sit all day in perfumed shade and watch the white of the marble change with the journey of the sun. But above all, I long to be with Sadie. Long to finally have the time to love. Oh, uh, but before you go, remember how when we first met, I took you by the jaw to inspect your teeth? Not something one forgets in a hurry. Now, if you recall, as per your own testimony, you've no culinary skills, you lack a sense of fashion, and you've little or no regard for personal hygiene. A damning assessment, if ever there was one. Still, I am nothing if not a tolerant man who believes in individual growth. I'm sure the journey taught you much. As such, I'd like to offer you what I denied you before, the opportunity to become my slave. What say? Taken quite by surprise, he staggers back, blood dripping down his nostrils. I take that as a no, then. Fair enough. But next time, please, use your words. You had your chance. Now all your life you'll wonder, what is? Without source to shield it, the barriers between Nemesis and Rivalon weaken. The void may be kept at bay, but the plane of demons is not. Look away from the past and into the future. There is so much work left to do. The flaming hatchling bounces and cheeps out of sheer excitement. Daddy! Looking, looking at me! It takes you a moment to realize the egg you've been carrying has hatched at long last. The chick trills contentedly and flaps its tiny feathers in recognition of its proud parent. It seems you've got a new mouth to feed. The chick's joyous flutters launch a few stray sparks into the air. It is elated by the very sight of its adopted father. Beast brushes detritus from his beard, sand, skin, and whatever else might have accumulated there. He takes a deep breath when he sees you. I never thought I'd be smelling the sea breeze again. We'd all be shuffling around as silent monks right now, so the air seems extra sweet, if you get what I'm saying. More malady magicalness, I'm guessing. He eyes you slyly, but consents to one final tale. The beast of the sea rose triumphant, guiding his fellow godwoken from an island prison to a final hurrah. He boarded the Lady Vengeance. Now, inexplicably whole due to magic a beast could never understand, and returned to his homeland. Then began the process of rebuilding, restoring trust, handing out hope, serving his people. Huh. 
Guess that one doesn't really end with a bang. But that's all right. You know, it's a work in progress. Source, no more powers. Don't worry, darling. I know you have plenty of other qualities. Reform my ways. <laughs> How adorable. No, I'm afraid I cannot escape who I am and what I've done. Her eyes flick down to your mouth. She smiles coyly, then slinks forward to kiss you. Her mouth meets yours and devours you with predatory abandon. Somewhere in the recesses of your mind, you think you hear her voice sigh, mine. But then the kiss ends. Something to remember me by, darling. Hmm. Who knows? A nice cottage someplace quiet from the Halley and I. A roaring fire and a feather bed. Maybe. Maybe. But a girl needs some fun, doesn't she? I hope you won't be a stranger, my dear. I do like to keep in touch with my acquaintances. Are you okay? You don't look okay. You are a very, very, very lucky person. If Malady hadn't restored us, I'd, well, I'd be a drooling monstrosity, but a vengeful one. Me too. I would have made an awful silent monk. Alosa must sing, and that's that. I don't know if anyone's free of anything, once and for all. But I'm bloody thrilled to be here now. Just me, myself, and you, of course. Get loot, play loot, get loot, get glad. So, Chief, I guess this is it, right? You say that now. But who knows what adventures and redheads life will throw at you. Whatever it is, you'll ace it. As she turns from you, the whites of her eyes darken, the veins in her face go grey, and a wicked smile curls her mouth. Suddenly it's gone again. She winks, and you're left wondering whether you saw anything at all. See you around. Losa sings to herself, a small smile about her lips. I always thought that those who resorted to self-sacrifice were lacking in imagination. But I must admit, I was rather noble of you. A world without source is one that will need individuals of wit and intellect. A sharp mind is the only magic now. I believe I shall enjoy this new world very much. That is the question, isn't it? How does one top the greatest feat of necromancy ever conceived? I might have the answer to that. Tell me, have you ever heard of Gustafjan? No, of course you wouldn't. It's a written language, unreadable to most, but myself naturally. It comes from a mysterious race from another world. Beings that feed on minds. I intend to seek them out. This Gustafjan seems to guard portals to their realm. And once I've uncovered one, well, I settle for being the greatest mind in just one world, and there's another for the taking. I do believe your actions amount to the first truly selfless act that I've ever witnessed in my time. Bravo. Elves. Look who finally graced us with their presence. I suppose some thanks are in order. What? No, no, you should be thanking me. I just saved the world from the great Acorn. You're welcome, by the way. Honestly, Marcus, some creatures have no sense of perspective. A huge grin slowly spreads across the squirrel's small face. 
Of course, had you not stopped this god king and his lackeys, there would have been very little left for me to say. So? The cat moves forward, twisting around your legs and filling the air with the sound of dry, dusty purring. Quirkers! Please have a little decorum. Quirkers arches his back, almost dislodging Solora, who just smiles. This battle is won, my friend, but we still have a war to fight. We've undone the great acorn, but the Knights of Dre are still out there. They summoned the great acorn once. They will be able to summon it again. We have to destroy their order, once and for all. That is the future Quirkus and I have ahead of us. We no longer need the machine, but we are very happy. The squirrel tenses for half a moment before relaxing into your fingers. Ah! Oh, my Quirkus. You never told me it felt this good. Well, that was certainly... An experience. Of course, this has all been something of an experience, eh? But of course, what else should we expect from our glorious shield, Quirkus? I never thought I would be proud to have defended a giant. But there is no one I... Ow, oh, Quirkus! There is no one that we would rather have walked this world with. I do not know what comes next for you, but you will always have a friend in the forest. Come, Quirkus, we must... Oh, I think you have something in your eye, my friend. The cat curls up and snuggles into his squirrel friend, who quietly sits and sniffs on the deck. The squirrel smiles, nods, and pats you on the leg. The purging that once silenced you remains on your mind as you approach Gareth. You are grateful for Malady's miraculous touch. Without it, there would be no you. Amazing, I'm still here. That you're here, and that you might still speak. That Lucian... Aside from a single blink, Gareth stands remarkably still. Time. Time has a way of changing someone. Lucian did not start as the man he became. Nor is the man I am now the same as him that once served at the side of a divine. Lucian doesn't need me. And believe me when I say, I no longer need him. I only did what I was meant to do. I don't deserve thanks. I gave only the bare minimum, and still I strayed quite far. Gareth shakes his head vigorously in response to his own emotions. Self-pity is as dangerous as any man I have battled, Alexander included. In this new world, this world without the seven gods, it's a foe I plan to defeat for good. I find a way to fit. I wasn't just content to lurk in Lucian's shadow. I was his shadow. Now I stand in the sun as my own man. I just don't know who that man is. And so I find out. My goal is to have a goal, if that makes sense at all. And if it doesn't, well, that's all I've got. Darling, you're here. And I'm here. If just barely. Thank the gods or whomever for Malady. I'm curious to see how long he'll last. He's a good man, which makes him a dubious god. I suppose in the end, I want more from life than to belong to a stale pantheon. That quite depends on you, I suppose. She loves, and it's music to your soul. We want each other, after all. We love each other, after all. Let others play the game of gods. Love conquers even divinity. 
Sabeel cups your cheek in her hand, and in her soft cat's eyes, you can read the prospect of tender days to come. Ah, the betrayal. Nefan folds his arms and steps back from you, as if your presence is toxic. I suppose this is proof I've got really bad taste in friends. After all that we've been through since Fort Joy, after all that, to end up with Lucian once more, to settle for abject corruption over change. He fixes you with a steely gaze, eyes burnished and shiny like pebbles of hatred. Don't you believe in anything? A better world was there for the taking, and you threw it away. I intend to spend the remainder of my days seeking to undo what you have done. It may not be possible, but when did that ever stop me before? Ifan pauses, as if about to say something else, then shakes his head. With one last nod, he whistles up his soul wolf and lopes off. Ifan scowls at you, but says nothing further. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. She is full of surprises. My wood was splintered, but my spirit intact. It was a great feat, but given her skill, not a surprising one. I feel better than you. I will always be an ally to those that carry swords, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old. And so, as always, I am at the ready. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always did. And yet, Something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. At last, the world was at peace. As the races united behind Lucian, Arcs remained the center of power. The ancient Lizard Empire opened its gates, the houses disbanded, and the Empire adopted a pluralist quasi-democracy. Anyone could vote for whoever they pleased, as long as the House of Shadows approved. Justinia returns to her throne. Under her rule, the Dwarven Kingdom prospered, until two years later, a jealous lover stabbed her in the heart with a mutton fork. Lucian made amends to the elves. He gave them lands and vast riches from the coffers of the old divine order. But the elves never forgave him. They would not trust humans again. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The Black Pits took fire. The oil there burns still.
driftwood became a center of industry, trade, and transport. Lohar became mayor, and Brayton Barnes grew rich, until, after a public argument over import duties, Barnes died in an accident, buried under several tons of fish, and also stabbed in the back with a gutting knife. Your lizard lover finally returned to the ancient lizard empire, there to found the newest and most popular of all the houses, the House of Love. Lagan left his over-demanding wife and began a relationship with a local bard. In the spirit of loving generosity, he returned the ring to his now ex-wife. In a fit of rage, she threw it into the sea. You would never forget Dorothea's kiss. Dorothea herself left Driftwood for the ancient empire, ever in search of the perfect kiss. She never found it, although once or twice she came close. The nameless isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Arx became a great metropolis, famed for its prosperity, its culture, its diversity, and the willingness of its denizens to stab each other in the back for the slightest advantage. Sir Gareth thanked the surviving seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with peace, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han went into the theatre and became one of the realm's most popular actors. Almira and Mihaili settled down on the farm. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favour. She presumed she had them in thrall. The truth was, they just liked her. With no new divine, Malady found herself in a predicament. She had an important problem to solve, but no ally strong enough to call upon. And so her search continued. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumours of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Ahu the wizard became one of Lucian's most trusted advisers once more. He always knew that something had changed in the Divine. He never discovered what that was, or if he did, he never said a word. With Amadia silent, the priestess Gratiana left the swamps and re-entered the world. She founded an abbey in the Dragonspine Mountains, offering the last of the undead shelter from fortune hunters, novelty seekers and ghouls. Mordus scratched out a living, ending up as a short-order cook. After an epiphany arising from the phrase, sunny side up, he started a religion. Upon his death from food poisoning, all three of his followers committed suicide. Jahan the Demon Hunter found himself at a loose end, so he opened a museum of demonic artifacts. He made a fortune. With Lucian in power, Sahela took the elves away from the world. They grew strong once more, amidst the trees of the regrown home forest. Some say her plans for revenge will bring about the end of days. Some say only Tova, her mother, holds her back. 
Lucian returned as divine, united the races, and became Lord Emperor of all Rivalon. Only Dallas knew that he was entirely powerless. Dallas and you. The Eternal, now known as Dallas, was a secret advisor to Lucian and to his successors. For eons she would walk in the world, and would outlive the peoples and all, and wander alone amongst the dying stars. The Beast of the Sea returned to the Dwarven Kingdom, not as a rebel, but as a lawmaker. Merciful and wise, he led the Dwarves into an age of prosperity. His grave looks out over the sea. With a small band of elves, Ifan Ben Mezd replanted the lost elven forests. After the first fresh shoots broke the earth, he disappeared and was never seen again. Some say Afrit, his soul wolf, walks the forests still. Sibyl wandered the world. She became a household name, famed the realm over as a traveling hero, celebrated wherever she went. Enjoying life to the fullest, she was truly and finally free. The Red Prince came home a hero. With Sada, he had more dragons. Soon, Prince became Emperor, one who would not use his dragons for conquest. His realm knew peace, and the world did not burn. Losa returned to her music and enjoyed a storied career as Rivalon's premier musician. Dark moods would at times overtake her, and she would spend long hours walking in the wilds. She always returned with a new song. And then there was you. In a world of peace, you could live forever. Your future was yours to decide, but you were a sorcerer no more. Did you accept your new status with gratitude, or did you rebel? Only you know the truth, you and one other, but of him you are free. The God King no longer calls your name, he no longer whispers your shame. Only you know if you atone for your sins.